Hi everyone, it's Justin. I asked you four questions on YouTube here and on my Instagram account to do a spring Q&A. I think I haven't done a Q&A video since last summer, so it was about time. On Instagram, my name is Justine Lecomte, if you don't follow me there yet. And in one day, we got over 300 questions, so I had to make a selection. I took a little bit of everything and I hope you'll enjoy the result. Let's go. First question. Hi Justine, what do you think about thrifting? Do you thrift? If so, what kind of pieces do you look for? In my case, it's a bit complicated because I'm 5'11 in inches, 1m80, and I have a long torso. So what fits me best is clothing from right now. The more I go back in time, the smaller and the tinier women wear, the less likely it is to actually fit me. This problem put aside, I do find really good outerwear in second hands, maybe a leather jacket, uh, or vegan leather, uh, coats, winter things that are boxier, mm? or in general garments that are made in thicker stable fabrics because they are less likely to have been um, washed so many times that the fabric is thinner and damaged or that the garment has lost its shape. What I would not buy secondhand is typically lace, satin garments, thin fabrics, and even more so if they are stained because all sweats or deodorant stains, you can't save them anymore. What are your favorite movies when it comes to fashion costume design? Also, I'd love a video on high quality versus low quality lingerie. I will skip the lingerie part for now. It's gonna be a different video. I will do this, I swear. <laughs> As for the movie, what I can think of right now, Downtown Abbey, great, because you see the evolution over time of the costumes, great costumes appropriate like for right for each decade so well researched then Mary Antoinette Mary Queen of Scots the new one Memoirs of a Geisha very poetic wonderful in colors <laughs> or you take a list of uh, prize winners you take for instance the list of Oscar winning movies for best costume and you start from there then next one how do you take care of your long hair and keep it healthy how do you take care of your hair? Hair care, please. <laughs> this was a, a much asked question, so let me quickly uh, guide you through the minimum, minimum routine that I do always. It looks like I don't do much to my hair, but actually it's not completely true. <laughs> when I wash my hair, I wash it twice in a row, always, with a shampoo for damaged hair, because my hair is very long. By the time I reach the, the, the ends, this hair is several years old, so it needs extra care, it is damaged. Then I always use a rinse off conditioner for damaged hair. Once or twice a week, I also use an, a mask that I leave in for five or 10 minutes. I really take that time. It's a bit of yoga in the shower. Then I don't blow dry my hair if I don't have to. I prefer to let it air dry whenever possible. And I finish with an oil spray. I think it's by Bumble and Bumble. It's called dry oil spray or something with UV protection in it. I protect my hair just like I protect my skin with an SPF. It makes the hair shiny. It smells great. I will try to look for links. I will put links to the products I use down below in the description if you want to have a look. Next. Hi Justine, I like your free spirit. Thank you. <laughs> what is your life motto, if any? I don't have one big guiding principle. I would say I go from one opportunity to the next. I have a rather low need for security and safety. I do have a plan, at least short to mid term, because I need a direction. But you know, it's only the plan until the plan changes. Maybe in a year from now, I, I will decide totally differently and it's completely fine. So my life is what I make out of it. It's my responsibility, but also my opportunity. It can sound scary, but it's very freeing to know that I, I can do what I want. And so can you. Do you miss friends? Not every day, um, that's for sure, but sometimes depending on the weather <laughs> and the food. So yes and no, I guess. Next one, I would like to know how old is too old to wear a crop top. I can't tell you an age limit. It depends on your taste, your body, how you feel in your body. I would ask how you intend to style that top. In my case, because of the before mentioned torso that I have that is extra, extra long, 
everything kind of looks cropped on me, even if it's not supposed to be. <laughs> but I've found a solution that I'm very comfortable with. I would wear a boxy crop top, even a very short one, over a longer skin tight top that covers my belly and, and my bum. So it really depends on how you intend to style it. Salut Justine. Hi. <laughs> I've always wondered what your exercise routine looks like. I think that your shoulders look great. Thank you. And that they're almost like a fashion statement or a fashion accessory. How do I get similar shoulders? Here is the secret of secrets. Start rowing. Not necessarily on a boat. You can do that on a machine in a gym as well. Rowing is great, especially for the upper body because the movement opens your chest outwards. Um, so you get muscles, but it's also great for the posture, you know. Right now in Berlin, I don't row, um, but I do go to spin class, which doesn't help for the upper body. I complete the spin classes with exercises on a TRX machine, which basically means that you're working with the weight of your body, um, moving around handles. It's very easy and quick to learn. Many gyms have it. Um, and I highly recommend it. On top of that, I sometimes do yoga, mostly in winter, because I like my yoga to be hot, and in summer, I don't like to be hot. But yeah, the next one is when saying Parisian. The stereotype is red beret and lipstick. <laughs> what do you define Parisian as? Okay for the lipstick, not okay with the beret. I think it's just an old stereotype that sticks, but you don't really see it on the street anymore. Lipstick, yes though. Um, and, and red, most likely. I think being Parisian is more an attitude. It's dressing in a chic, elegant way. Tasteful, I would say, but maybe it's just subjective, while being very personal. When you ask a Parisian woman what her style is, she will say, oh, nothing really special, like just blah, 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 blah. And then she can talk about her style for an hour because actually, without really realizing it, they put a lot of thought into what they wear. They spend time looking at brands. They really wonder what is that special accessory that will make this outfit mine. Which tool do you consider indispensable to your designing process? Adobe Illustrator or your mannequin? <laughs> So this is a great question. Um, the more, the longer people have been watching this channel, the trickier the questions get. <laughs> I know who you are. So here is my answer. People trained in pattern making will tell you, you only really need Illustrator. As a design person with a more visual approach, I will tell you there are many designs that you cannot get just with Illustrator. You just need to drape on an actual body to see how it falls. Otherwise, you won't get the right shape. So I keep my mannequin. A video on eyebrows, please, please, please. I've been asking for this. Oops. Every time you ask what we wanted to see. Okay, okay. Um, sorry, I don't remember seeing it. Is that a topic that more of you would be interested in seeing? Top of mind, I would say it depends on your proportions, right? So it depends on the shape of your face and your eyes, regardless of the current Instagram slash Kardashian slash Jenner trend, like in terms of, of harmony. Let me know in the comments. We could make this a full video if you are interested. Hi, Justine. I know you're busy. <laughs> could you suggest two things? A good book to start learning to sew and a kit for people who begin sewing which machine and tools. Mm -hmm. Easy. So on the book, I have a great one that I had to buy in fashion school in my first semester. A fantastic book. I've used it a ton. It has a visual explanation, step by step. It's great if you're a beginner and if you're advanced. It has everything in there. That's the only sewing book that I own. It's called Reader's Digest, New Complete Guide to Sewing. It says exactly what's in it. <laughs> I will put a link in the description if you want to have a look at that. And then regarding the machine, my first personal machine was a Singer Stylist number blah, blah, blah. I forgot. It's dead already because it was mainly plastic. It had fancy stitches that I'd never really used, <laughs> but it couldn't take thicker fabric or several layers. It wasn't so fast and the needle tended to bend a lot. So not so good. I recommend that instead you look for a second-hand machine in metal. 
much more durable. And what you need is really just a straight stitch. You don't need all the fancy ones that look like this. You need a straight line, a machine that can take um, thicker fabrics like felt, like leather, things like this. Good and so it's stable, straight. That's all you need. As for the presser feet, you want two, that's it. One that has two feet, the standard one, and one that has only one foot, that's for the zippers. That's all you need. Next one, have you thought to record a series where you talk about some iconic pieces of clothing which revolutionized the world? Actually, I have. <laughs> Glad you ask. It's a lot of research, but know that it is in the pipeline and stay tuned. How do you balance the weight between consumption and creation? Hope spring is adding more colors in your life. It does. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying spring as well, wherever in the world you are. It's a rule of thumb that I use, I guess. I have a list full of things that I think should exist. <laughs> if I find them, I will buy them. If I don't, I can create them. The other way around, if I see something and think, oh, this is cool, but I've never actually missed it before, then it's very likely that I don't need them in my life. Where do trends come from? Who sets them? Who's the first to create? Who copies? This is a great question. In the early days of this channel, I did a short video series about that. What is a trend? When does it start? When does it end? Who decides what's going to be in trend, etc. I will link this short video series here in the corner, in the I sign, and down below in the description of this video for you to watch. If you still have questions, then we take it from there. What's your favorite historical era for fashion? Right now, <laughs> the 15th century, to be very precise. I read or reread uh, Notre Dame de Paris by Victor Hugo, which is a classic, classic, classic in France. And it happens in 1482. They say it very precisely at the beginning. And it reminded me yet again that I know very little about that period pre-Renaissance. So that's the era I'm striving to learn more about right now. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Thank you so much. Remember to check the description box down below under this video. I will put their product links, books, movies, uh, previous videos that I mentioned, everything will be in there. Are you subscribed to this channel? If not, do subscribe so that you get the next video. Also click on the little bell icon next to the subscribe button so that when I upload a video, you actually get the info. <laughs> and other than this, I will see you again on Sunday. Take care. Bye.